Hey everybody, this is Robert of Robert Burke Games, and today I would like to do a little walkthrough video of the new card game called Draco Magi. Draco Magi is a two player card game that was designed by Richard Launius and myself. And in this game, you take on the role of a dragon uh, magi apprentice, and you are trying to rise to power by proving your worth at commanding dragons. Whichever apprentice is able to command dragons better is going to rise to the position of the Dragon King or the Draco Magi. Um, so that's basically the, the, the tenet of the game. And you'll see that there are a bunch of decks on, on the table here. You are going to choose one acolyte, the green, uh, the green acolyte, which is here, or, or the, the gold acolyte. So I'm going to play the gold dragons in this, in this walkthrough. And when I play the Gold Dragon Acolyte, um, you'll see I've got the Gold Dragon on the back of all my Dragon cards here. And I should tell you that these are prototype cards, so we have made some changes. You know, some of the cropping isn't quite right. The artwork that you see in the game here is uh, the artwork that you're going to see in the final game. Um, but it is going to be improved upon. You know, some of the prototype cards are too dark. Some of the text might be too small. Um, but all that is being upgraded for the, the final the final version, so just to let you know. So you'll see I have a deck of dragon cards here, all kinds of dragons. Red dragons, gold dragons, brass dragons, green dragons, silver dragons, all kinds of purple dragons. There's ten different dragons, multiple sets of ten different dragons in your dragon deck. Um, and the other, the green side, has the same exact dragons in their deck. Each dragon has a very specific ability that plays a role in the game. And I'm not going to go into those right now. As I play through the game, I'll kind of talk about some of those abilities um, so you can get a sense of how it works. I also have uh, my own battle deck. And the battle decks are the same here. They have the same backs for the green and the gold side. But on the front, you'll see I've got a gold dragon icon and gold borders. That identifies this battle deck as the gold players. And the reason that the backs are the same is because we have this other deck with the same exact backs. These are the advanced battle cards. So these are more powerful. Uh, and there's a draft at the beginning of the game that I'll walk through real quick. And there's ways to get more of these more advanced battle cards into your deck. So there's a, there's a little bit of a deck building element in the game uh, where you can tune your deck through gameplay and drafting uh, to improve your, uh, the, the, your possible chances of becoming, uh, being victorious in the game. So uh, this, this, you'll see the, on the battle cards, uh, there's a shield value and there's an attack melee, uh, a ranged attack value, that's that fireball icon. So this top half of the card is used in ranged attacks and the bottom half of the card is used in melee attacks. Uh, then you've got a little symbol down here. These symbols on the very bottom, and we think we're going to move these to the top just uh, so it's easier when you fan your cards out to see them. So we are making some slight changes based on blind playtesting feedback right now, uh, but just wanted to mention that. But these symbols, if you can match those, they enable combos during the melee uh, phase of the game. But these advanced cards are, you know, you can identify these by the red uh, borders and the lack of a color on that, the dragon icon in the middle there. Uh, we also have battlefield cards. So these battlefields, uh, we're going to try to win these battlefields by sending dragons to these different battlefields on the table uh, to win a, a battle, me against the other apprentice. If we win a battlefield, like if we send dragons, if I won this uh, mist, uh, Mountains of Mist battlefield, I would win the associated gem. And you see there's a green gem there on this card. When either side win, gets, collects, three gems of a different color or three gems of the same color, they immediately win the game. And these are double-sided. You see there's the dungeon on this card on one side, and on the other side is the uh, the dark lands and each of these battlefields has a different um, modifier on it as well like the dark lands you'll see plus one shield for black and purple dragons so these are always going to be randomized when they come up and it is going to 
impact how you place your dragon cards during the game. So that's an important thing. Now, to start the game, I'm going to deal from the bottom of the deck, since they're double-sided, the rules state that you deal from the bottom of the deck, I'm going to deal three battle cards in the middle of the table. So there is uh, the Frozen Tundra, and then we have the Deep Forest, and finally we have Mountains of Mist, and I will put these other battle cards there. So these are, these are the different lands in the kingdom where we are sending our dragons to try and win these gems. Now again, when you win three of the same or three of a different color, you immediately win the game. Um, this is just a first player token I'm using, just the glass gem. Um, the game is going to have a first player card that we'll do a design for. If we reach a stretch goal, we'll do a nice custom uh, cardboard uh, first player uh, token that you can that'll be double sided so you can pass it back and forth or just flip it from the red side uh, to the green side. So to start the game it's going to work like this. Uh, each player is going to take three advanced battle cards. So I'm going to give three to green and I am going to give three to myself. This is the draft. So I'm going to look at the three cards I have gotten. Oh, and I've gotten some some good ones. Well all the advanced battle cards are good ones. I've got a uh, uh, this card which will uh, defend against two ranged attacks and will do two ranged damage. This one is two and two as well which is very good. Uh, in the base cards there's ones and there's twos but there's misses. If they have no star bursts that means that attack has missed completely. And I also have a claw ambush card that has one each. On the bottom the melee value this is two claws so this lets me attack with or defend against two claws. So this is basically a double attack card, which is good. Bite twice, that's also a double attack card. And then I have a claw ambush. This is one I really like, so I'm going to probably keep this one. Um, it lets you attack with or defend against one claw, or when you use it as an attack, the attacking player may randomly choose one of your opponent's card and remove it. Only during the melee phase. Remember the melee phase marked by this uh, claw, the scratch uh, icon here. Um, that's the ability that you can use during the melee phase. This is the ranged attack, and that is a defensive shield icon for ranged attack only. So I'm going to take Claw Ambush. In the draft, I get to keep one, then I've got to give one to my opponent, and then I have to discard one. So these are basically the same, so it doesn't really matter if there was, you know, and I've got a choice here, right? I like the Claw Ambush ability. But by taking the Claw Ambush ability, I'm giving up the extra attack on ranged attack uh, that both of these cards give me. So it's a tough decision. I just really like to steal and hose somebody and take a card from them during a melee battle. So that's why I'm taking that. But um, it might be a good option to take one of these because they have really good defensive and offensive ranged uh, of values there. So I'm going to give this to my opponent. And then this one goes back into... Uh, the advanced battle deck. Now, on the green side, I won't look at these. I'll just, uh, well, I'll look at them. What the heck? Give me an idea. So this one is a deadly strike. Uh, you can see the deadly strike defends against one claw. It's got a two shield against a ranged attack, and it does one hit against with a ranged attack. Uh, but when this is the deadly strike is played as an attack, both players must discard one dragon on the battlefield where you play this but the defender must also discard two battle cards of their choosing. So you'll see when we get to the melee phase of the game um, that the number of cards you have during the melee round is very important. So Deadly Strike is a very good card as well. Ancient Magic, this may, might be even better. This is two hits and two hits, which is very good, but it counts as two magic attacks, um, which is very good. So if I play this, the opponent is going to have to defend against two magic attacks instead of one. And it also defends against up to two magic attacks, which is very good. And you'll see how magic attacks work uh, later in this tutorial. So this card is very good to defend against. Flight. This is a really good card. I'm going to have a hard time picking between flight and ancient magic in this, this draft phase. You'll see uh, it's got a ranged attack. It hits three times, and it's got a range, a range defense of three successes as well. So this is a really good card uh, for ranged attacks. 
for for melee it, it counts as a flight card you've got flight cards in your base deck too although they don't have these really high uh, ranged attack numbers what a flight does is this, if I play this I can defend against any attack so if an opponent plays if my opponent plays a combo on me a melee attack combo that includes maybe two claws and a bite for example and he played three cards I could defend by playing the single flight and avoid all those attacks so flights can be very crucial to, to doing well in the game however there is a downside to flight. They're very obviously there's great advantages defensively, but they have no offensive value at all. So you cannot play this as a melee attack. Very good for ranged attacks, but in a melee in the melee phase, it's really worth nothing as an attack card. So that's something you've got to think about. It depends on what kind of strategy you want to play in the game. So I would think that my opponent, he's gonna go, he's gonna go with the flight card um, and then he's gonna give me the deadly strike because he doesn't want me to have the ancient magic so he's gonna discard that ancient magic card so now once that draft is over we're gonna shuffle all those discards back into the advanced battle deck and then I'm gonna take the card that my opponent gave me and the card that I've selected and they need to be shuffled in to my battle my standard battle deck here so I'll shuffle those, and then my opponent is going to shuffle their cards as well into their battle deck. So you got to shuffle them in. I'm going to move these back so we have a little bit of room uh, to play. All right. So the first player, we'll just assume that I am the first player. Uh, it's usually the oldest player in the game gets to go first. So since I'm playing an invisible opponent, I'm going to be the oldest player, and I'm going to be the first player. So here's my first player token, and I just put it there to remind me that I am the first player. So now I'm going to draw eight dragon cards. You want to shuffle your dragon deck before you start the game, and I'm going to draw eight, deal eight to myself. And my opponent is going to have eight cards as well. And I will deal, I will shuffle his up here. And he will get... Eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So when you play Draco Magi, the first phase after you after you set your battlefields and then players do the draft, then you're ready to go to the battle. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to place one dragon. You're going to alternate players to place a dragon on one of the battlefields. So when I place a dragon, I have to place it on my side. You can never place a dragon on your opponent's side. I place mine on this side and the opponent plays on the other side. You can play it on any any battlefield that you like. The only rules are that you cannot place more than three dragons on any one battlefield. So remember I've got eight cards so that means I'm gonna be able to place three dragons on two of these battlefields but there's one battlefield where I'm only gonna be able to play two dragons. All right, so let's go through uh, a round of the game, and we're going to start. The battlefields are out. We've got all we've done the draft for the advanced battle cards. Each player has drawn their dragons and have got their battle their battle decks ready. So, as the first player, I'm going to go first. Gold is going to go first, and I'm going to look at my dragons and see what I have. I have a polar dragon. This is a very special. Dragon. Each player only has one of these in their whole deck. Uh, this dragon uh, has a very good ranged attack of two, very good melee of three, and a very good defense of three. However, instead of choosing to do a ranged attack, this dragon can freeze a battlefield, and I would do that by playing it on top of the battlefield. When a battlefield is frozen, no side can win that battlefield this round. It basically takes it out of play. So it kind of helps you focus. Because remember, there's always going to be one battlefield. You're going to have to pick one battlefield where you're going to play one less dragon. So this kind of helps you strengthen yourself on the other two when you have a polar dragon. Or if you know you're really losing on a battlefield and you know that you're not going to win that melee attack 
because maybe you've lost a couple dragons or one dragon in a ranged attack and they've got a much better, they've got a big melee advantage on you on the numbers, then you can play this polar dragon and freeze it um, and live to fight another day. So that is the polar dragon. So that was a good draw. Uh, he's got a brass dragon. A brass dragon is pretty special uh, because it is good in melee. It doesn't look like it's great in melee with a two. However, when it fights with its brethren, when it is paired with another metallic dragon, dragon, any metallic dragon, brass, bronze, gold, or silver, its melee attack value doubles from two to four. So I want to play this brass dragon with this gold dragon, with this silver dragon, or with this bronze dragon. Any one of those, if I play it on the same battlefield, his melee will go up to four. Uh, the gold dragon is excellent with ranged attacks. Its special ability is cool too, but its ranged attack is two. Most ranged attacks are one, but the gold dragon, if I play this, I get to draw two cards instead of one card when I do a ranged attack. And that's and these icons, the numbers under the icons, they basically tell you how many cards you get to draw. So if I make a ranged attack, I get to draw two cards. If I make a range attack with the green dragon, I only get to draw one card. When I defend, you get to defend with the number of cards equal to your shield value. Now, we're again, we're moving these two, uh, the shield down to the right, and the melee is going to be up on the top in the, in the final version of the game. But the shield value tells you how many cards you get to draw in defense to a ranged attack. All right, so that is, is that. I've got a purple dragon and a silver dragon. Silver dragons are great to play out of the gate because uh, when I'm, I'm going to play first, when I play a dragon, like if I play this gold dragon, that would be a horrible play because the gold dragon has a very good ranged attack, and you can only make a ranged attack right when you place the dragon on the battlefield. So if I did that, that would, uh, there would be a couple mistakes. One, I should save this until my opponent has a dragon down. That way when I play it, I can use that ranged attack. If I play it on a battlefield, battlefield where my opponent does not have a dragon, I just wasted that ranged attack. I don't get to use it. Also, you'll see this Mountains of Mist is, has a modifier of a minus one shield to all metallic dragons. So I want to try to avoid playing metallic dragons on that battlefield. This battlefield gives a plus one melee battle to silver and bronze dragons. And lucky me, I have a silver and a bronze. So I probably want to play those two there. This, the frozen tundra, gives a plus one ranged attack to any dragon with a ranged attack. So that's a great place for my gold dragon because my gold dragon special ability, if I succeed with a ranged attack with my gold dragon, I get to draw another advanced battle card and put it on top of my battle deck. And that is a very important distinction to make because if I can execute that ability of my gold dragon and all the advanced battle cards are better than what you start with. So that's going to go to the top of my deck. So I know the next time I have to flip a battle card, it is going to be a good one. So it helps you kind of strategize on when to play that gold dragon when you have the best chance of success. And then the next time you need to draw a battle card, you want to maximize that advanced card that you know you have because you won it with this guy. All right, so uh, that's a pretty cool ability. Silver Dragon is a very cool ability too. He is immune to ranged attacks. So you know what? I could play him here. Minus one shield to metallic dragons. Well, all metallic dragons except silver because silver has reflective scales. No ranged attack can hit a silver dragon, period. So this is a great card to start, to start out with. When I play my first dragon, I want to try to play a dragon with a high armor value, right? Or a silver dragon is the perfect first play because if because when you place your first dragon, you are exposed, right? Because your opponent now can attack that dragon with a ranged attack. And when they have eight dragons in their hand, 
chances are pretty good that they've got some ranged attacks. Not all dragons have ranged attacks. Like the silver doesn't, this bronze does not, this brass does not, this purple does not, but this green, this red, uh, this gold do. And this frost uh, polar dragon does as well. So, when you're going first, you want to make sure you're placing out dragons with good armor values, or this uh, silver dragon is the perfect one to play. Now, playing it there would be a good move because it's minus one to metallic dragons, but it doesn't matter because he's got no shield value, right? Because he's immune. I could play it over here. That gives plus one to ranged attacks, but plus one is not going to help against the silver dragon because he's got reflective scales. He's immune. Now, this deep forest gives plus one melee to silver and bronze dragon, so that is my first play. I'm gonna play my silver dragon here on the deep forest. My melee, when we get to the melee round, it's gonna go from three to four. And again, that's gonna tell me how many cards I get to draw during the before the melee phase. So I've already got four cards that I'm gonna be able to draw when we get to the melee phase because of this deep forest. And I'm gonna to get to play at least two more cards here. So that's a good play. All right, so that's the gold player's turn. Now we'll go to the green player's deck and see what they've got. No, nope, they've got a silver dragon. And they've got a battle dragon. The battle dragon is the other special dragon in each player's deck. Each player only has one of these. These are the melee powerhouses. They have no ranged attack, but they have a shield value of three, and they have a melee value of four. And not only that, their special ability is battle fury. So if you're able to put a wound to hurt the battle dragon, it's not discarded, you tilt it. It takes two hits to destroy a battle dragon. So this is a very good card. I've got three, two silver dragons and a battle dragon. So I've got three great cards that I can play first. I've got two brass dragons. These are good too. These, um, you know, these will let me uh, as I said, upgrade from a 2 to a 4 if I play it with another metallic dragon. I've got a uh, bronze dragon and a green dragon. And I've got a gold dragon, which I want to save for this frozen tundra. Because that's plus 1 to ranged attacks. So if my opponent, if my opponent, which is this side, plays something there, I'm going to get three cards on a ranged attack, which is really good. So what am I gonna do? I gotta play something with a high value. I might as well, well I don't know if I wanna scare my opponent with the battle dragon just yet. I think I wanna start with a silver dragon, uh, just like my opponent did. But you know what? I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna place it there. So the plus one ranged attacks is not going to benefit this side because he's immune anyway. All right, so now we'll go back to the uh, gold player. The gold player needs to choose what he's going to do next. So uh, now I could make a ranged attack here, but it's not. I can't impact the silver dragon, remember, because it's immune to ranged attacks. That's its ability. So I do not want to play my dragons that have a ranged attack value. I want to save those. You really want to try to get the most out of your ranged attacks. It's hard to hit with a ranged attack. It really is. But the, the game is designed that way because if you take out somebody's dragon with a ranged attack, it's really going to give you an advantage during the melee phase, which is going to help you win a gem. So it's designed to be hard. So when you do succeed with a ranged attack, it's pretty it's pretty great. Uh, Polar Dragon, I want to save that. All right, I see what I'm going to do. I've got a Purple Dragon. Purple Dragons are cool. Their special ability is Stealth. So when you play a dragon on the battlefield, if you're going to play it on a battlefield where you already have a dragon, you've got to play it on top of that dragon. When your opponent attacks your dragons on the other side, it's always going to attack the topmost dragon. The purple dragon is the exception to the rule. The purple dragon allows you to place under. So you can place a purple dragon underneath a dragon you've already played to the battlefield. 
So by placing this purple dragon under the silver dragon, I've just protected the purple dragon because remember, silver dragon is immune to ranged attacks. So it was kind of a sneaky little move, uh, but my purple dragon is now going to make it guaranteed to the melee phase, and he's got a very good melee value of three. So I've got six melee, I'm gonna have six melee cards at a minimum for sure on this deep forest. So that was my play. So now I'm gonna to go to the green side and see what the green side is gonna do. So the green side, you know, the, the tough thing here is they wanna wait on their, their uh, ranged attack dragons. They've got a gold and they've got a green, right? Uh, they can't hurt the silver dragon, so the ranged won't work for them at all. Uh, the battle dragon is definitely a possibility. They've got another silver dragon. That might be a good place to play here because silver and bronze get a bonus. They don't want to play a silver here because it's get minus one to its shield value. Although that doesn't matter, again, because they're immune to range attack, so that would be an okay place. He could play another silver dragon with this silver dragon. Because the Silver Dragon's melee value is pretty good as well if they want to go for that battlefield. And they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to be uh, hit by a ranged attack because that gets a bonus to ranged attack. But you know what? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go. That, that Frozen Tundra is looking good. I'm going to play my Battle Dragon. So even if my opponent hit me, I would still survive. And then my next turn, I could play my other Silver Dragon to protect the Battle Dragon. And I will end up with a melee value of 4 plus 3 plus 3 of 10, which is pretty good. So that's my, that's my play. Green player is going to play the Battle Dragon there on the Frozen Tundra. Alright, so now we're going to go back to the Gold player here. And the Gold player is going to... Hmm, so see, hitting the Battle Dragon is going to be tough because the Battle Dragon gets to draw three cards. But you know what? I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the Gold Dragon to attack the Battle Dragon. The Battle Dragon gets three cards in defense, but I'm going to get three cards in offense. I get two plus one because of the Frozen Tundra. So let's see how that plays out. So I'm going to place a gold dragon on the frozen tundra. That means I'm going to get to draw three battle cards. I flip the first one, and that shows me that I get one hit. You see here is the ranged attack. That Each starburst that you have is a success. On the defensive side, each starburst you have is a success. On the top of the battle card is how you resolve ranged attacks. On the bottom is how we do the melee attacks, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But that's my first card, that's one hit. Now I'm gonna get my second card, and that is gonna be another hit. I've got two hits now on the Battle Dragon, and I get a third card, because remember, the Frozen Tundra gives me a bonus of one extra card, and I get another hit. So I've got three hits with my Gold Dragon against that Battle Dragon. All right, so now the battle dragon is going to get to defend against those three successes that the gold dragon had. So the battle dragon has a shield value of three. So the battle dragon gets to draw three cards to defend against those successes. So the first card is a success on the shield. Now you're looking at the shield side, right? Because the battle dragon is defending, so we're looking at the shield. So that's one. Second one, there's another one. So the battle dragon has two successes. One more success and the battle dragon ties the attacker. And on ties, defender wins. So one more success and the battle dragon is fine. Oh, unfortunately, the battle dragon did not have a success. Battle dragon has two successes. The gold dragon has three successes. That means the battle dragon takes a hit. We turn that battle dragon sideways. We discard our battle cards that were played. Let me discard them real quick. And 
most importantly, we get, or the gold, the gold dragon, the gold side, the gold player, gets to draw from the advanced battle deck, which is over here, gets to draw a new advanced battle card and put it on top of their battle deck. So the next time that they have to draw a battle card, it's going to be a good one. And they know it. They don't know what it is, but they know it's going to be a good one. All right, so now we go back to the green player. And the green player is going to look at their cards. All right, so now we have a gold dragon out here who's got an armor of three, which is good. But remember, we've got this plus one to ranged attacks. So you know what? I think that the green player is going to try to come right back at the gold player with a gold dragon as well and place it there. So the gold player now, or the green player, sorry, the green player gets three attacks. This is green, yep, this is green. Green player gets three attacks on this gold dragon because of the bonus on the frozen tundra. So there's one hit. There's one, there's two, and there's a miss. So that's two hits. Gold Dragon gets to defend with three. Oh, and remember, they got the advanced battle card. So bam, two successes. They got a bite and claw, and they've got two successes with the first card. And so they don't even need to draw any more cards. They have tied, they have successfully defended. So you can see how getting a win with a gold dragon and getting that advanced battle card is really, uh, it's, a helpful, it's a helpful thing. And I'm gonna discard these. All right. So now we go back to the gold player. And the gold player has a polar and a green and a red and a bronze. And you know what? I'm going to keep working it. He got, he's got a green dragon. He's going to play the green dragon here because it's got plus one to ranged attacks. So he's going to get one card, two cards. One, miss. There's a miss. There's nothing there. The second one is a hit, too. So two hits uh, for gold on the attack. Now, the green player is going to get to defend with three cards, right? Normally would get to defend with three cards because the armor value of the gold dragon is three. However, the green dragon's special ability is it reduces the target dragon's shield value by one because of its poisonous breath. So that green player is only going to get to draw two cards to defend, and he needs to defend two hits. So we've got two hits. Did it. All right, so all the dragons stay. So whether you succeed or fail when you place a dragon and make a ranged attack, it doesn't matter if you succeed or fail, the dragon stays on that battlefield. If you succeed, the opposite dragon is removed. If you fail, it stays. So that's the only thing. It's basically setting yourself up for that melee round is how you're really going to win the gem in the end. All right, let me discard these cards here. And then we're going to go back to the green player. And the green player is going to play... You know what? The green player is going to play... He's got to do this. He doesn't want to play metallic dragons there, and that's kind of all he's got left except for the, the green one. So that's kind of a... He's going to go ahead and play a bronze dragon because he's got another bronze dragon in case that bronze dragon is, is hurt or, or killed. So now the gold player, he sees that bronze dragon there and cannot resist attacking. 
So remember, this, this Polar Dragon can freeze a battlefield, which is a really good ability. However, having a two attack could probably take that Brass Dragon out and really maybe set him up. The Red Dragon special ability lets you attack a second time if you succeed with your first ranged attack. So it would kind of be a waste to use it right now. could play a brass dragon here and it would double its value because of the silver but it would be exposed to future ranged attacks on that side because he's got two more dragons he can place so these are all kinds of things you've got to think about when you're playing this game when you're doing the placement and the ranged attacks you really need to be thinking about how is it going to look during the melee phase because that's how you win the gems and that number right there, that melee attack number, is very important. So you need to be considering that. So I've got three and three right now, and he's got two. But if he plays a metallic dragon, that's going to go up to four. So it might behoove me, you know, this polar dragon, the gems are so important. I can't stress it enough. That's how you win a game of Draco Magi. So it is my best option, I think. I believe. I may be wrong to play this Polar Dragon and use its Breath Weapon. So I am going to attack that Brass Dragon with my, my two Breath Weapon. And I'm going to flip two cards. One is one. I've got one hit. And two, I've got two hits. And I'm glad I used these cards on attack and not defend, for sure. So I got two hits. Now, Green gets to defend, but, but Green's Brass Dragon has a shield value of 2. And Brass Dragons make good bait, right? Because, because the opponent knows that if they play another Metallic Dragon, especially a Silver Dragon, if I played a Silver, if I played a silver Dragon, now the Brass Dragon can't even be gotten to, and that Brass Dragon has a melee of 4, which is as good as a Battle Dragon is, right? So, and since their shield value is lower at a 2, a Brass Dragon is a great bait card. Alright, so I'm going to draw two cards and try to defend. And I've got one. I need one more. And I got one. So the Brass Dragon survives. Brass Dragon stays on the battlefield. And we're going to go back to the gold player, who's down to three cards. Oh, I'm sorry. The green It's the green player's turn. It is the green player's turn. And the green player now, and remember I said I had a silver dragon? And look at, lucky me, silver and bronze dragons plus one. And, they, and this side can't play anymore. So I am going to play a bronze dragon right now. And I'm going to choose not to flip that battle card over. There's no reason for me to. A bronze dragon has the ability of blink, which means it can flip the battlefield. Half of the battlefields have a different color gem, which could really matter when your opponent needs, you know what color they need to win the game. You can play a bronze dragon and have a chance of changing that gem to keep prevent them from winning the game. Or maybe you can flip a gem to make you win the game if you're confident you can win that battlefield during melee. Right, so that's the Bronze Dragons. It's more of a strategic card. But he's got a great melee value. And he's, since he's a, a Metallic Dragon, he's going to double my Brass Dragon to four during melee. Um, the other half, half have a different color gem. The other half have the same color, but a different battlefield, so a different modifier. So it's an interesting thing. So brass, uh, my Bronze Dragon has no ranged attack, so there's no resolution to happen there. And it goes back to the gold player. Um, the gold player is going to, he's going to play a bronze dragon, a brass dragon over here. So remember, there was a gold dragon here already. So that uh, brass dragon is now going to also go from two to four. Then we go to the green player. And the green player is going to play, he has got three, three, and three. Nine to five. Nope. That's a four, right? Because it's paired with a bronze. So four and seven. So it's seven to nine right now. So if he plays... 
it's going to be hard to hit the polar dragon with a shield value of three with this green dragon. It's going to be hard. So he is going to go ahead and play the silver dragon because the silver dragon gets the bonus from, from the deep forest. And so does the bronze dragon. So now he's going to be set up pretty good for melee because he's going to have three plus one is four. Three plus one is four. That's eight plus four because that brass dragon is paired with another metallic dragon. So 12 melee cards. All right, so now that's it. All the dragons have been placed on the battlefield. They have flown in. They have used their breath weapons. A couple dragons have died in that initial servo of fire and ice coming down from the skies. And now they are going to resolve these battles with tooth and nail. So I, the goal player is the first player. So he gets to pick. He has the choice of which battlefield they want to resolve first. So, uh, it doesn't really matter so much now in the very first round, but obviously having that first player marker later, if you only need one gem to win, right, it's, it, makes, it does make a difference. So it is important that this first player marker passes after each melee battle, whether, it's a, whether you succeed or fail, it passes every time. So I'm going to show you one melee, uh, one melee round here, and um, then I'll show you how uh, how, how you uh, kind of finish the game up. Uh, but I want to go through at least one melee round to show you how it works. And if I was going to choose, this one is two plus two plus two is six, and this one is three plus two plus four. Wow, that's nine. So that's seven to nine. This is 9 to 12, and this one is 3 to 4. So you know what? I'm actually going to go with where I have one less dragon, all right? Because 9 to 12, I don't want to do right now. And there's ways to reinforce. If I get lucky, I can get a reinforcement card and maybe move a dragon over here, and I might have a real shot at this gem. So on the, on the gold side, I get a three cards because I have a three melee value. So I'm going to draw three uh, melee cards here. All right, so I got three cards because I have a three melee value. I've got a claw or reinforce. That is great. That is what I wanted, actually, is a reinforce. I got a bite, and I, I got a magic, which is very good. Now, none of my symbols match here, so I cannot play these cards together. If I had three stars, I could play all these cards at one time. However, if my opponent had a flight card, they could avoid that attack, and I would have no cards left. So that's something to think about. And so green got a claw and a claw, and a bite, and a bite or retreat. Uh, retreat won't help in this battle because there's no room to retreat to over there. So gold is going to attack first, and gold is going to attack right off the bat with a magic. When they play a magic card, it has to be defended with a magic, but both players get cards equal to the number of cards they played. So since I played just one magic card, and this card is included, I played one card, I get to draw another card to add to my deck. And I've got a bite twice card, which is pretty good. So now the green player has got to defend with a magic or a flight. And they've got a bite and a claw and a claw and a bite. The green player cannot defend against that magic attack. They cannot. So they lose a dragon. It is now one dragon to one dragon. Now it passes and during the melee phase the attacker becomes the defender and then the defender becomes the attacker. It alternates. So now the green player gets to attack. The green player has four cards left and they have uh, they can do a combo. They can do a bite claw, and I think they're gonna because they know that the gold player only has three cards, right? Three cards. But if they play this combo, uh, they're they're 
they're betting on the chance that I don't have a flight card. If they played these two cards and I had a flight card, I would avoid both of them, and they would have burned two cards to my one card. But they're going to risk it. They're going to play a bite and a claw. So I have to defend with a bite and a claw or with a flight. There's a bite, and there's a claw or reinforce. Interesting. So I've got to play bite twice. I don't want to do that. I don't want to waste two bites for you know one bite. I could, but it would waste one. So I'm going to keep that. So I'm going to defend with the one bite. And then I have a choice. I could defend, and I would be down to one. I would be down to one card. But you know what? I want to make sure I win this battle. So I, instead of using the claw, I'm going to reinforce. I'm not going to play the bite. I'm going to lose the dragon. But when I lose the dragon, I get to reinforce this battlefield with a dragon from another battlefield. And things don't look good on for me anyway on some of those battlefields. So I might as well sacrifice one of these dragons to gain more cards over here to ensure I win that gem. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the Reinforce. And then I have to decide which dragon I want to move over. And I want to move over the Frost Dragon. So the Frost Dragon has a melee value of 3, which means I get to draw 3 more cards. Remember I kept the bite and the bite twice plus I get three more cards now. There's a flight and a claw and another claw. So now it is Green's turn. And they have a bite or retreat and a claw and they match. So let's say I play, they play both. They're going to try again. They're going to play a bite and a claw because they both have moons. They can play them together. However, I fortunately have a flight card now because of my reinforcement action. So I'm going to play a flight. I avoid that attack altogether. And now I get to attack. And unfortunately for Unfortunately, for the green player, they are out of cards. So I know they're out of cards, so I'm going to play a bite twice. Now, when you play a card as an attacker and the defender has no cards, they get to flip one card at the top of their deck at random. So they'll flip this. They got a bite. They defended one of my bites, but did not defend the other. They lose their dragon. So... I am the only dragon remaining. I win this battlefield. And I have one green gem. I am one green gem towards victory. If I get two more green gems, I win. If I get a, a red and a yellow, I win. If I get a red and a blue, I win. So I'm one third of the way there. And we've got two more battlefields to resolve. I'm going to pass, pass the, the first player marker to the green player. And then they're going to get to pick which battlefield they want to battle on. And they will probably pick this one, right? Because I reinforced from here. So they've definitely got a big advantage on me on this battlefield. Uh, so they'll probably win that green gem. And then it's going to come down to a, a fight uh, for this gem here. And then after that is resolved... We're going to deal three new battlefields, and we get to start another round. Usually the game goes for just two rounds. It's about a half an hour game when people know the game. You know, this is taking a while because I'm trying to explain everything. Um, but once you know the game, it takes about a half an hour uh, to, to complete a, a two-player game, pretty much consistently, once the, once the players know it. Um, but these battle cards make for a lot of interesting decisions. Uh, the combos make for interesting decisions, and you'll learn things, uh, and you'll become a better player as you play the game. For example, the flight cards, every, each player starts with just two flight cards in their hand. Now, there are two advanced flight cards as well, and you, so that's an unknown, but as you see your opponent play flight cards and they're burning through their deck, the risk goes down for your combos, right? So that makes it a lot more interesting. 
You know, if you know that your opponent has already burned two flight cards and you've got some combos you can play, you want to play those combos um, because you know they've already burned two flight cards and the chances that they have another are slim. Um, another interesting thing besides, you know, the magic, I mean, there's interesting decisions like this bind card. You can play this bind card with any symbol. So, for example, if I played a bind with, uh, let me find a magic in here. Yeah, there's only a couple magics as well per player because they can be more powerful. So I've got a magic. Let's say I have a magic and a bind. And let's find uh, some more suns. Let's say I had these things in my hand. Let's see. Let's say I had that and that. Let's say I had these cards. This would be a great combination to play. If I had a bite, this is a sun symbol on the bottom. Remember, that is your, your, your combo identifier. That's a sun. That bite, this claw is a sun on the bottom. This bind, I can combine with any of them. And a magic. So the bind, all that says, it has no attack value. But if you play a bind, your opponent cannot play a flight card. So if I played a bind and a magic and a bite and a claw, I get to draw four cards because I played four cards and my magic card lets me draw cards equal to the number of cards I played. My opponent cannot even use a flight card. They've got to defend against every one of those attacks. So it gets very interesting, the melee battle on managing your hand, trying to set yourself up during the ranged attack and placement phase to make sure you're in the best position for that melee battle so that you can get the cards that you need to win that battlefield during that, that melee phase. Okay, so that's basically it. That's how you play Draco Magi. So in the first phase of the game, during that, that placement phase or, or the, the ranged attack phase when you're commanding your dragons out to the different battlefields, you really have to consider the modifiers on all those, the three different battlefields that are up. You have to consider uh, the, the, the special abilities that each dragon has and how you are going to play them to the battlefields that happen to be in play. And you really need to focus on positioning yourself for that melee battle. So there's a lot of different strategies involved with that. It seems like it's very simple. I play a dragon, you play a dragon. But because of all the special abilities the dragons have and the roles that they fill, and the different modifiers on those battlefields. Sometimes you want to bait your opponent so you can get advanced battle cards with a, a gold dragon. Sometimes you want to bait them to play uh, ranged attack dragons because the range of the dragons with the ranged attacks tend to have lower uh, melee uh, values, right? So if uh, the on the, on the plus side, if you succeed with a ranged attack, you're going to take a dragon out from the other side. But you've got to remember that you win the gem with the melee, during the melee round. So if you play a bunch of ranged attacks and your melee is, value is poor and you let your opponent uh, get a leg up on the, on the melee side, then you're probably not going to win that battlefield. Now the card play during the melee phase, there's a whole different strategy involved with that. So just because you're down, as you saw in my example here, I only had one dragon to two, but I was still able to win, um, you know, because I was had that reinforcement card and was able to get more cards uh, and was able to win that battle. So just because you have more dragons on your side or more a higher melee value at the start of the melee round does not mean you are going to win uh, that, that melee battle. But your chances do definitely improve. So it's all about... Uh, you know, uh, removing risk. It's all about building your deck, getting more advanced battle cards. It's going to make you more powerful. It's all about strategic placement of your dragons, making sure you're taking into consideration the dragons you have in your hand and the battlefields that are on the table. Um, you know, then there's, then there's, you know, dragons like that bronze dragon that can flip battlefields, that can change the direction that a battlefield is going. That kind of stuff is pretty cool as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this kind of taught you or showed you at least how the game is played. Uh, now, I'm sure I probably made some mistakes. I know I made some mistakes. I think I added up one of the battlefields incorrectly. 
there. I didn't take into account um, uh, the, the plus one over here. This was a 10, not a nine. I think I said nine earlier. Um, so that's one thing I, I messed up. And I'm sure I made some poor uh, strategic decisions uh, as well. Like instead of playing this gold dragon uh, over here, um, I really should have played, because I had a bronze dragon I sh that I played, ended up playing here, that I lost. I should have played it here, I think, right, and used that gold over here, um, because that would have given me, because there's a silver, that would have bumped it up to four, and that would have really given me a good advantage on the melee side on this battlefield. And again, it's that melee that is so important. The ranged attack is really your setup, right? How are you going to position yourself for that final battle to win those gems and win the game. So uh, it's a, you know, I think it's a pretty strategic game. It's a card game, right? So there's going to be some luck involved, right? Depending on the cards you draw on the battlefields that come up. But that's kind of really reduced. The, the luck of the draw is reduced a lot uh, because how you play what you have really has a big impact on how you're going to do. Um, and with eight, starting with eight cards, both players, and they're drawing from the same pool of dragons. Um, it really has more to do with, uh, you know, how well you play rather than what you, what you draw. Um, but there are critical moments, obviously, critical moments where luck of the draw can, you know, help or hinder, hinder you because, you know, it's a card game. But, um, but like I said, 30 minutes to play. Uh, there's a lot of strategy in here, and I think Richard brought the theme through very well. I think it really does feel like a... Uh, a, a dragon fight where you're trying to block attacks, you're trying to make attacks, you're trying to find weaknesses and exploit them uh, to win that battlefield and get and get the prize. I'm Robert Burke. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, you know I'll be glad to to answer any questions if you leave me a message on Board Game Geek or on the Kickstarter page or at robertburkegames.com. If you have any questions or suggestions, I would love to hear them. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.